Yo guys, this has got to be the best bang for the buck 12 millimeter ultra wide lens for APS-C. Yeah, the per gear 12 millimeter F2 lens. Now, while it's not the best in its class, it really out punches way out of its price range. Now, the closest, cheapest ultra wide 12 millimeter F2 lens for APS-C is the Samyang, the very popular Samyang. 12 millimeter f2 lens now that lens yes is definitely sharper but more costly it's more expensive so if you're willing to sacrifice edge sharpness and if you want to save a few bucks then definitely going with the per gear it's a real good option so throughout this video it's not going to be technical i'm not going to go with specs and show you like graphs images of graphs and whatnot there are other YouTubers that do that so much better. So I'm just gonna share with you my personal experience. You get to see uh, my B-roll, my footage, all the stills I have taken with this lens and see for yourself the pros and cons that I'm about to mention while you're watching them. Like the saying goes, a picture says a thousand words. Hopefully through these samples that you're gonna watch, you'll get to see a thousand words of review right in front of you. Why don't we start with the pros? Definitely the size is really compact, is small, paired with the X-H1 balances well, and definitely even with the smaller Fujifilm bodies or the smaller Sony bodies, it's gonna weigh really nicely and handles really smoothly. Speaking of which, the build quality. Now the focus ring, it's smooth the aperture ring is clickless so photographers that are petty and picky about not having clicks on your aperture then now you know stay away from this lens personally let me just tell you before you go it hasn't bothered me one bit i have never accidentally bumped into the aperture ring i've never just misused it in any other way the aperture ring actually turns nice and stiff it has a nice stiffness to it so you can purposely set your aperture and be assured that it will not move by accident now the focus ring on the other hand it did get a little bit soft so it's actually looser than the aperture ring which is really stiff and smooth so i don't know if that's just due to the time because i've been using this lens for over six months going on seven now and uh yeah i feel it's a little bit looser than before one definitely pro that i really appreciate and love about this lens is the filter thread 62 millimeter filter thread in front of the lens that allows me to put on some step of filters with uh some andes in there and get some nice long exposure shots some of these ultra wide full frame lenses have such a oval curved protruding lens or optic on the front that you can't put any filters on it. So definitely a pro and thumbs up for you per gear. I was pleasantly surprised that you could get nice shots wide open at F2. Of course, stepping down, you will get the best image quality. Anywhere from F5.6 to F8, you get the best results. I found that this, actually this lens, diffraction kicks in kind of early. So after F8, I'm sure we're around F11. Uh, aperture diffraction really, really decreases the image quality so i would just stay away from those after f8 don't even bother going up there because it's just going to be soft also the minimal focus distance on this lens is awesome you can get as close as 18 millimeters which is really close right up front to your subject and with an aperture of f2 you get some separation by far this is not a portrait lens but it is really cool that you could get this creative option in such a cheap package Uh, some of the cons. All right, so this lens definitely is not perfect. It's cheap. It's ultra wide. There's bound to be a lot of defects. And let's start out with the biggest one, and that is the corner softness. This has some really soft corners all over the frame, all around your image. It's going to be like just soft. But again, surprisingly, the center is really nice. And the trend, as, as it goes to all lenses, stopping down, sharpen things up. So F8, you get corner to corner, decent sharpness at the edges of the frame, but overall it is pretty sharp. And of course, you're looking at the images right now. Don't just take my word for it. 
Distortion is another problem with this lens and most lenses in this category. But something I do appreciate about the distortion is that the lines are pretty straight. It doesn't have a lot of curve and like oval curvature on the, on the edges of the buildings. I think because it's a 12 millimeter, it's not fish eye level. So we do get straight lines but they are distorted. So it's gonna be a little tricky getting your composition, but if you get it right, you can alleviate that issue as well. And lastly is the vignette. Shooting wide open at F2, you do get vignette, but again, that's another artistic choice that you could use, implement in your images, or again, the trend, stepping down, erases that shadow. You get some nice clear image all the way around. So like I say, a picture says a thousand words. Hopefully all the B-roll, the images you saw throughout this video gives you a nice idea, a great review of what kind of lens you can expect for this price. In conclusion, yeah, I can highly recommend this lens due to the fact that it's less than $200, including shipping. So for $160, you are getting a very wide field of view. You get some nice wide open aperture at F2 and great close minimal photo focus distance that gives you a very artistic shot. Hey, can't beat it for $160. Again, as mentioned before, if you are interested in checking out the prices, the current prices, I got links in the description. And if you do end up purchasing it, using the affiliate links will contribute and support the channel. And beforehand, I wanna say thank you guys for the support you show. And also, if you did like the images you saw throughout this video, I would really love to hear your feedback Hit a thumbs up that lets me know that you guys did actually enjoy the video and the images also share so other people can see other people that are considering this lens can see what this lens can do and don't forget to subscribe because i do have more lenses reviews coming up more gear stuff to review to you guys and yeah if you want to know when that's coming up don't forget to hit the little bell to let you know when the video is uploaded so thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.